Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at equilibrium of a particle. A particle is an object we consider to be dimensionless, so it is so small basically you can ignore any of its, its lengths or its extremities. Uh, when, the force, when forces act on a particle, they can move it in any direction but cannot turn it. If a particle is in equilibrium, then all the forces acting on the particle must also be in equilibrium. So basically, if something's in equilibrium, the forces up equal the forces down, the forces left equal the forces right, and um, forces any for any particular uh, plane are going to be zero. So particles, the particles shown are in equilibrium in this question. Find the unknown forces to three sig figs. Okay, right. I'm going to do this in a more awkward way, just so we have a bit more practice of doing the triangle of forces method. But I wouldn't normally do this. So if I was doing this normally, what I would do is I would resolve vertically. And up going up, I would have x sine 71 plus, uh, sorry, that was y sine 71 uh, plus x uh, sine 63 is equal to 31 cos 15. Okay, that would be my equation 1. I would resolve horizontally and I'd have uh, y cos 71, that's going left, is equal to x cos 63 plus 31 sine 15. Two equations, two unknowns. Not easy, but you could solve those, and that's what would be my preferred method of doing this. But as I said, I'm not going to do it that way today. I'm going to, for this particular one, I'm going to use a triangle of forces just to show you the triangle of forces can be done as well for any sort of weird shape as long as there's only three uh, forces. Okay, I'm going to start by drawing my um, my 30, 31 Newton force. So it is do. It acts with the vertical, and it acts down this way. I'll make it a wee bit shallower. It acts down this way. It is 15 degrees. Okay, and that was my 31 newtons. It goes down to here. So the arrows, remember if it's in equilibrium, the arrows have to be consistent. So uh, I'm going to have an arrow going this way, and then maybe an arrow going this way, and then my last arrow is going to have to is going to have to get back uh, to the start somehow. So uh, maybe, oops, maybe like this, which would take us back. We'll see once we draw it exactly what way it works. But here, notice they're all going the same way. They're all going in this particular one. They're all going anti-clockwise. So that's what we're going to do here. So from I'm at the, at the end of my thirty-one, and then I'm going to I'm going to draw my X now going up. So x is at 31 degrees to the horizontal, so sorry, 63 degrees to the horizontal. There's my x, so it goes up to here. And again, this is a very rough diagram, just doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to have to do, to get back to the start, I'm going to have to do my y. So it's not a, quite a perfect diagram, it doesn't matter. And y was, it was 71 degrees, you can see it's not a great diagram at all. Uh, but this will allow us to find everything we need. So. If this angle in here is 63, then this angle in here must be 63 as well by parallel lines. So that's why it's important to mark on these be dashed lines and so on. So this angle in here is also going to be 63. What else have we got? What else can we do? Uh, we could work out it by, if I do another wee vertical line in here, this angle will also be 15 because, again, it's another alternate angle. That's 15, that's 15. Uh, and then I could calculate this angle as well. So this angle then could then be calculated as 90 minus 63 and so on. So 90 minus 63, whatever that's going to be, 30 minus another 3 is going to be 27. Uh, yep, and then you could calculate this angle as well. So you could calculate this angle. So the three angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So you've got this, uh, you're going to, this is going to be 180 minus and the, the other two angles are made up of 15, 27, 71 and 63. So if we work that out, that's going to give you just four degrees in here. So it's a pretty ropey diagram, but there we go. Okay, we're going to redraw this thing nicely now. So uh, redraw again. So it doesn't really matter about the size of the angles are anything, as long as you've labeled them correctly. And now I'm going to label them properly. So 71 plus 63. 70 plus 60 is going to be 130. 1 plus 3 is 4, so 134 degrees. And then this one is 
uh, 15 plus 27 is going to be 42 degrees. And that's what we've got. Is there anything else we have on this diagram? This is my side X, and this is my side 31 newtons. Okay, so this is a triangle. This triangle here is the one that we're going to be thinking of whenever we're, we're doing our working out for this question. The question now has nothing really to do with equilibrium. Uh, it is just a sign rule question from now on in. So uh, we're going to use uh, by the say by the sign rule. We'll just say what do we will find x? Well, first, we'll find x. X divided by sine of its opposite angle is four, is equal to my thirty-one, and its opposite angle is one hundred and thirty-four. So your x is just going to be equal to. Uh, x is going to be equal to uh, sine of 4 times 31 over sine of 34. So x works out to be 3.01 newtons, and that was the three sig figs, that's what they specified. Same idea, y divided by its opposite angle, sine of its opposite angle, which was sine of 42, is equal to 31 over sine of 34, which means y is equal to sine of, and what was it, sine of 42 times 31 over sine of 34. So y works out to be 28.8 uh, .8 newtons to 3 sig figs. Okay, but just to reiterate what I said at the start, I would have definitely preferred to have done that question. There's an awful lot of uh, tricky uh, parallel line stuff going on there. I would definitely have preferred just to resolve vertically and then resolve horizontally to get two equations in X and Y, which then you all have enough mathematics now to be able to solve. Okay, our next example, we're going to do it uh, my preferred way. So I'm just going to resolve horizontally. And we have to do it this way as well in this particular one because we've got four forces. So if you've got four forces, triangles are out of the question. So you have to do the resolve method anyway. So if you just learned the resolve method, as long as I don't ask you about to do it specifically by a triangle of forces, uh, you will be okay. So resolving horizontally, you'd have Q cos 28 is equal to 6.5. And then that just means Q is equal to 6.5 divided by the cos of 28. So straight away, you can find your Q is equal to 7.36171. Notice again, I've gone to a whole pile of decimal places because I need to use my Q uh, for the rest of the question. Now I'm going to resolve vertically. So going up, I've got 7. Going down, I've got P. And also going down, I've got Q sine, uh, sine of 28. So that means I'm just going to say my P is going to be equal to 7 minus, and then we'll sub in what we know Q is, 7.36171 times sine of 28. And then if we do that out on our calculator, you'll get 3.54 uh, newtons, and that was to three sig figs. And then we'll give our answer to Q as well. Q to three sig figs is 7.36 newtons to three sig figs. Lovely. Our last of our example says a particle of mass 9.5 kilograms is attached by two light and extensible strings to a ceiling as shown. Complete the diagram showing all forces and find the tension in the strings. Okay, right. This thing here, this is our 9.5 kilogram mass. So it's going to have a weight going vertically down. So its weight is going to be 9.5 G Newtons. It is held up by the, the tension in these strings. So I'm going to call one of them T1 and I'm going to call the other one T2. And I'm going to use my preferred method. I could use triangle forces to do this one, and it wouldn't be too bad a one to use because we've got a vertical line at least. Uh, but I'm going to use my preferred method, which is resolving horizontally and resolving vertically. So resolve horizontally. I'm going to need, I have two forces going horizontally. To the left, I have T1 cos 50. To the right, I have T2 cos 30. And then we can go from here. So what I could do here is rearrange and make T1 the subject. So T1 is equivalent to T2 times cos 30 divided by cos of 50. Okay, I'll go up here. So in 
the, one of the previous examples, I used it and, it and the form it is now, I would have subbed that into my next equation, but I'm going to actually work this out and see what T1 is. So T1 equals T2 times, and if you put um, cost 30 divided by cost 50 into your calculator, and you'll get 1.34730 times T2. So you may find that a wee bit easier. So I've gone a 5D piece. Right, now um, we'll call this equation 1. Now what we're going to do is resolve vertically. We've resolved horizontally. Only thing left to do is resolve vertically. Resolving vertically, what you're going to get is T1 sine 50 plus T2 sine 30 is equal to 9.5G. And that is my equation 2. Now I'm going to sub in. So I'm just going to say sub equation 1 into equation 2. And I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, why did I not do the, the earlier example just like this? This is a much easier way of looking at it, really. But good to see the other way, would, the advantage of the other way, it gives you a perfect answer until the very end, whereas this one you're rounding a bit earlier, earlier really. So 1.34730. Uh, that was my T1, uh, so that was times T1, and that's now times sine of 50. Sorry, that's like times T2, that's T2 sine of 50, and then plus T2 sine 30 is equal to 9.5G, which is just going to be 9.5 times 10, so 95. We can then tidy up and see what you get. So if you did that on your calculator, uh, what you're going to get is... Well, first of all, you're going to get 1.03209. Uh, that is T2 plus, and that's just 0.5 T2 is equal to 95. So you've got 1.53209 T2 is equal to 95. And then what you want to do is just divide across. So your T2 is equal to your 95 divided by your 1.5320, and if you just do that, sorry, 95 divided by, just to check this, 1. Uh, 1.5320, and there was a 9 on the end of that, which has disappeared, and if I do that, what I get is 62.0068, uh, and then we will go on from there, and see what we get. So, uh, if you do that, Sub that back in then, so sub that into equation 1, and your T1 is going to be equal to, I'll just squeeze that off the board there, your T1 is going to be equal to 1.34730 uh, times 62.0068. So your T1 works out to be, uh, so 1.3473 times uh, 63.0068, which works out to be, 83.5, and did it say how many decimal places it didn't? We'll just go for 83.5 uh, newtons to 1 dp. And then your last line, just tidy up your T2 as well. So your T2 to 1 decimal place is going to be 62.0 uh, newtons to 1 dp. Just on that, folks. Cle clearly, 62.0 and 60, 62 are the same thing. But you need the 62.0 if you're giving it to one decimal place and to be consistent with the other one, that would be a good thing to do. So there you have it. There's your final answers for that question.